You ever wonder how the everyday objects in your house get made? Someone has to design them. We're here at Delta Faucet to learn how creative people make the things you use every day. Follow me. Support provided by the Glick Fund, a CICF fund focused on inspiring philanthropy. Additional support provided by the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation in honor of the children and families of Crystal House. Inside this space, two groups have to come together to create something that not only looks good, but has to function. Industrial designers create the look of the fixture, the form, while engineers have to worry about the, the mechanism, the function. Both have to come together in good design. I'm Jordan Baylor, and I'm an industrial designer for Delta Faucet Company. And all through high school, I took ceramics, photography, painting. I did oil painting, of all things. Really? And my mom was a fine artist, and she was a photography major in graphic design. And so she really was always pushing me in that direction, you know, taking us to museums. And my dad was an engineer. And so it was science oh, wow. fair, science fair, you know, physics. It was, you need to be an engineer. You need to have a, a job that's going to pay the bills. And I found myself really pulled. In my mind, I had figured it all out. I'm going to get a job at an engineering company and work on their design team. And she's like, oh, you don't want graphics. You want product design. You want industrial design. And my jaw hit the ground and I was like, that's exactly what I want. Like, Sign me up, what is this? And yeah. I had no idea that, that major was even offered. How do you start finding design? I mean, yeah, you talked about you find inspiration. I mean, what leads you to like, hey, I need to make this, or I want to make this faucet. Where do you even start with that idea? I know, faucets don't sound that exciting initially. You know, faucets, toilet right, showers, right. you think, <laughs> people design those, but we actually do, and that's that's my job. So yeah. um, sometimes it's as simple as we need a really, you know, ornate faucet, something with a lot of detail, and then I'll kind of start in that style category, or maybe it's something really clean and simple. And then other times you'll just find something like, oh, I love that dish or that chair. Yeah. And then I'll challenge myself to say, how can I turn that into a faucet? How what can I challenge. make something different? It gets to the idea you need to be observant. You're going to find inspiration. You have no idea where. Which, tell me a little bit about, I see you got sketching going on, and you have like these milk jugs yeah. up here you're taking a look at. So I was showing these milk jugs the other day. So the fact that this form goes from square to circle okay. was kind of the inspiration behind the Mateo suite. So I had that pulled up here. I was looking at different finishes. Oh, can kind of show how much it changes when you're looking at materials. So something that, you know, it's really sleek looking like chrome and then we can go in and see, well, what would it look like oh, wow. in a really, you know, urban environment maybe. Yeah. And it kind of just changes the form a lot. So when you're designing, uh, which, is it often the form comes first or function or in certain lines, does it change? Every once in a while we get to have a really fun project where we get to push engineering. And if the design is so specific that our standard valve and, and such won't work with it, we get to to do a little bit more unique things and we'll work with engineering. So sometimes engineering comes first and sometimes design comes first and it just kind of depends on the design. So the key is we want to try to use as many parts as we already have as possible because it meant it reduces the amount of time we have to spend in designing. It also makes it a lot more reliable because we have parts that we know they work and so that way we right. can uh, reuse them and reuse them in the design. So Jordan's done a really good job with this design and making sure that it fits some parts we already have. Do you find often the case that you have to go back to somebody like Jordan and say, hey, this little thing got a tweak. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we, we get, and, and it's sometimes it's hard to see, you know, until you get all the parts put into it about whether the part the things are gonna fit correctly, if there's gonna maybe a little bit of radius here, a little bit of angle there. Yeah. So so we'll make little tweaks and suggestions and we'll kind of work with the industrial design group back and forth to figure out what's gonna work and what's not. And generally we come to a consensus that's gonna work for everybody. So is this something that's that's made here? I mean, how long does it take you to get to wherever it's created itself on the? Well, the really cool part about this is we have this technology in our own building. So I can uh, take Jordan's design, uh, we can work with the, the, all the engineering staff of getting the internal details into it. We can send it out to our model shop and a couple days later we can have the part to try it out. I really like to be able to take to work with them to get their vision to production because I think it's important that you know what they see and what they think the customer wants, it's important to try to do what we can to make sure that we're bringing that vision to reality. So I like taking the challenge of trying to not just uh, 
fit existing stuff, but sometimes make new parts. So I really enjoy that collaboration aspect of, you know, working together and the end, everybody's happy with the result. It's, it's essential to get collaboration with everyone else. A lot of times I'll say, you know, this is so close, something's not right. And I'll take it over to one of my colleagues and say, you know, what do you think about this? What am I missing? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll just know right off the bat, oh, this needs to be a little wider or maybe, and we just feed off that. And it, and it changes and it evolves as you go. And the design, sometimes you just need people around. You need a second opinion. And I trust these guys so much with, with their thoughts and their design style. Okay, so we're at the, we're actually, where are we at, Jordan? This is our employee break room. Yeah, all right, so we're in the break room. But what's really cool is so, you know, again, going back to the thing, it's got a function. So what's it feel like, like, all right, this is the working product, right? Um, it's it's very exciting. It still feels kind of surreal because I'm so used to seeing it not working. Right. But you know, here it is, and yeah, I it's a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment. Wow, I will never look at a faucet the same again. What an awesome example where artists and engineers come together to create something that has to look good and function. For this project, I'm going to follow the pattern of inspiration that Jordan had. So I found something that I see often, and that is colored pencils. My goal, take these colored pencils and inspire a faucet design. Sounds easy enough, but I have a feeling it's going to be more difficult than I think. Let's check out our supplies. First thing, of course, are colored pencils. Then I have a pencil, eraser, and a sketchbook, but any type of paper would work. I also wanted something to build from, so I grabbed this Delta faucet for its clean, simple design. Lastly, I'm going to step two and transfer this to a digital format using a tablet. I'm really excited to try this out. Let's get started. First step was to sketch out several ideas simply because I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to work. Remember that this is simply a sketch, so don't get caught up in trying to make it look perfect. We're just throwing down some ideas here. I can't draw a straight line myself, so no, it's not cheating when you use a ruler to make a straight line. I decided to make the nozzle resemble the tip of the colored pencil, which is not easy. Once I had worked through my sketch, I then started to transfer it over to the tablet in a really similar way that Jordan did over at Delta. I don't see a lot of faucets on the market with color, so of course, I'm gonna add a lot. All right, I'm gonna stop there for now, but I'm having a lot of fun with this idea. I really wanted to push the color since I don't see a lot of faucets with a lot of color. I hope you got inspired by this and I cannot wait to see what you create. Until next time, guys, stay outrageous. What involves volcanic ash, dangerous chemicals, extreme heat, expert timing, ground pigment, and expert creativity? You guessed it, fresco painting. Check this out. Fresco painting using wet plaster dates back to 1500 BC and the island of Crete in Greece. Of course, fresco can be seen around ancient Greece as well, often within tombs depicting scenes of everyday life. There are even scenes of a couple dudes just reclining at a banquet. However, where we really see some incredible examples is in the ancient city